throw a heads. This is an alert. Something big may be going down. There's all kinds of strange activity going on, and I'm getting all kinds of reports. I got this one from a friend, and I'm not going to disclose my source, but it says, no idea what is going on, but just saw a report of the security forces of Minot, that's Minot Air Force Base, where we got intercontinental ballistic missiles and B-52 bombers, nuclear strategic bombers, uh, but forces at Minot going nuts, running around the missile fields. This is not the usual drills they go through when they move missiles, just security forces running around by themselves in numbers enough to be noticeable. Local law enforcement running around with them, suggesting this is more than just your usual military exercise. But again, no clue as to what's going on. Well, local law enforcement may invoke that it's not a military matter, but it might be maybe uh, somebody tried to breach the compound. But maybe it is a military matter because we look at, at everything going on. And then again, it might be something like where the Chinese uh, were trying to get in Fort Wainwright recently up in Alaska. As we well know, Minot Air Force Base had that Chinese spy boom loiter over it real slowly and do a lot of reconnaissance. So guys, what is going on? Uh, this is against the backdrop of a lot of other crazy things. For example, on Tuesday, Sergei Sergei basically come out and said, hey, you know, if you use these long range missiles against areas that are not part of the special operations, areas of Russia are not part of the special operations, and that includes Crimea, that uh, NATO uh, and the U.S., but he's specifically for the U.K. and the U.S., we will deem you to be essentially at war with Russia. I'm paraphrasing now. I'll give you a more exact quote in a minute. Well, he said it in Russia, so I won't give you an exact, exact quote. <laughs> but this is serious, guys. He said that if, if they do it, and what happens? So that was Tuesday. Well, what happens? Thursday, Crimea strikes the Kronhar Bridge, which is considered a gateway to Crimea. It's one of those so-called overland routes. Well, there's still the overland routes got to go across a swamp and some rivers and water. I think I've shown you that in the past where there's only a very narrow strip of land where uh, invasion forces can actually get through. So this is considered uh, a major strike at one of the most important arteries uh, that didn't take the bridge out. It made a hole in it. I'm assuming the way it looks up, they can probably patch this up and use it again real soon. But this is the kind of thing that he was talking about right there. And uh, to, to, to really up the ante uh, on uh, Wednesday, there was a spate of uh, EAMs, emergency uh, action messages from, uh, which is what we uh, sent out to our emergency alert messages, which we sent out to our nuclear strategic forces uh, and there was just a whole litany of them, all back to back, that lasted about two, uh, one and a half to two hours. And it was just unprecedented, just one after another, after another, after another. And according to uh, Lee Wilbarger on KLW World News, uh, he said that they, that they uh, actually, uh, he had intel that the, the U.S. was listening to the, the details of the Russians moving their nuclear forces around, and that's what they're responding to. Well, all that might fit together, maybe. I don't know if that's exactly what was happening, but the uh, tensions are going through the roof, guys. Um, he said also that there is a huge number, uh, 12 special forces, uh, uh, so that is what he calls special service military aircraft flying around in uh, Russia. Now, that's what they usually would be sending their special forces around. But he said never in that, uh, in the one and a half year war, have we seen 12 of them airborne at the same time. And so they've got something cooking, and that's not necessarily nuclear. But Kenan Prepper said that the bombers are in the air. Well, and they put the bombers in the air from time to time, and so do we. But, uh, guys, the tensions are off the chart. So that's why when you, you start taking all these things together, the EAM's unprecedented. Uh, and furthermore, it, it's this whole thing where uh, basically Sergei Shogu and Putin are inferring that they will nuke the West. United States and, UK and United Kingdom in particular over what may be going on with regards to Crimea. That's the veiled suggestion and what all has been said. And just to make the, uh, you know, the, the, the soup saucier, uh, it looks like the United States has finally decided to send that long range attackings missile, which we saw we can't send that across the red line or cause nuclear war. Well, 
we're apparently going to send that now to Ukraine. The kind of thing that we give the kind of strikes that Sergei Sergei was talking about is when he said it would it say that NATO was complicit in the war and would consider this an attack from NATO. And if they consider it an attack from NATO, it means they can strike back. They've also said already that if uh, any of the uh, if 16s are flying in and out of NATO base, NATO bases, those bases are valid targets. So guys, we're creeping toward war here with NATO, the United States, United Kingdom. <sighs> guys, it's it's getting a little too interesting. Now, some people say that Putin is just putting all this up because he's on the verge of losing. But then again, the Ukrainians are not really doing so great with their counteroffensive. Now, supposedly they're just trying to poke some holes to get through, to find a weak spot to get through. But apparently they've started recruiting, uh, actually not recruiting, they're starting a draft of all able-bodied service uh, males in the population in, in Ukraine and Kiev itself from 18 to 65. That speaks of desperation. That speaks of they're on their last leg, if that's the case. Now, I, I was talking about that. I said, you know, back in the war between the states, the Confederate Army dwindled down to teenagers and old men, teenagers and old men. That's how bad it got. So, guys, uh, you know, there's only so much manpower you got. If they're already getting back to their uh, uh, back reserve of, of draftees, then they're not in a good shape. They've been going through a lot of people down there uh, trying to break through the Russian defenses. Uh, heard numbers like a thousand a day on both sides. So, but Russia's got a lot more people to draw from than does Ukraine. So, Ukraine can't really afford the losses up to a certain point. That's like, okay, now they're in trouble. And that's what happened to the Confederacy. You know, it got in trouble because it expended too many people, especially in the Battle of Gettysburg. That was kind of the deciding point of that war. So I mentioned that in the past. And I'm just drawing analogies because that's just the way things work. And it, the analogy fits. So uh, Putin has just announced that he was putting the Sarmat 2 missile on combat duty. He didn't say he was mobilizing them. He didn't say he was uh, putting them on the ready. He used that term combat combat duty that's a veil threat in itself so guys the, the the language is off the charts the movements the things that are happening are to be concerning so I, i'm that's i really asked the whole message there. i could go into a lot of other details i'm going to show you some pictures real quick but i, I just don't want to uh, belabor this too much because this is i don't want to dilute this message i'm going to keep it focused tonight on this one thing uh, comments by yeah this is what uh, Shogi was saying yeah he stressed it uh, such missiles such missiles in use of course outside the zone a special op special military operation will signify their full fledged involvement and there he's talking about the United States and Great Britain in the conflict and will lead to immediate strikes but then he said on decision making centers in Ukraine so you know I mentioned this a couple nights ago well, we're going to consider you responsible to go hit this guy. I, I don't know, guys, but I've heard that the, the threats got more direct against the United States and Kingdoms, United Kingdom since then. This is the hole. This is the hole in the Cronhard Bridge. Now, that looks pretty bad, but when you look at it from the overall picture, it looks more like that. So it's a hole in one lane. So it can restrict traffic. But is it compromised? Is the structure, the bridge itself, so I've been compromised by the shock of the blow? I don't know. But this is the kind of thing they're talking about. Now, we're talking about adding to this, adding to this, the uh, attacking's missile. So that will really get Russia hackled. If the attacking's missile is hitting in Ukraine, uh, it's Crimea, uh, or over in the mother Russia, yeah, game over. Well, maybe not over, but it's going to be too interesting. I'm going to stop the share, my friends. Too interesting, too interesting. Um, guys, consider getting ready. Prep everything you can. Make sure you've got a full tank of gas in that car. Make sure you get groceries. Make sure you got whatever you need. Because it, we're in, almost in a game of musical chairs. And when the music stops and you have to sit down, what you got is all you got. You make sure you get the means to defend yourself and your family. Make sure you get means to feed yourself. And mostly, make sure you got means to purify and sanitize water. That's the most important thing. Make sure you can do that. I got a video talking about how to do that with plastic bottles and all that kind of stuff. So, guys, and go to 
prepwithgreg.com. We got specialists there for long-term food storage, prepwithgreg.com. And, you know, grow a garden, or at least if you don't want to grow one this year, get the seeds because you might not be able to get them next year. This may be it if the, if the bloom goes up and uh, the grid goes down. Uh, what you've got is all you got. So go to True Leaf Market and uh, Eden Brothers. Check out my links below to that. Get seeds. Get ready to garden. Hope you're already doing something. You're still plant a fall garden. Get some practice from that. If you don't have a garden, grow something on a pot in your porch, in your stoop, your window. Put some lights in your closet and grow something there. <clears throat> anyway, my friends, just take care. Take care. That's all I got to say. With that, I'm going to say, Greg out.